Once upon a time, long ago, a beautiful lady that lived in a castle upon the lake beyond. And they say she was promised to a king's son and they were to be married. help us and thrown into the lake above and so of course he couldn't keep his promise to the fair lady and more's the pity well the story goes that she went out of her mind because of losing the king's son, for she was tender-hearted, God help her, like the rest of us. Well, sir, 
In course of time, the white trouts, God bless it, were seen in the stream beyond. And sure, the people didn't know what to think of the creature, seeing as how a white trout was never heard of afar, nor since. years upon years the trout was there just where you seen it this blessed minute longer nor I can tell a troth and beyond the memory of the oldest in the village at last the people began to think it must be a fairy for what else could it be and no hurt nor harm was ever put on the white trout <laughs> until some wicked sinners of soldiers came to these parts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And laughed at all the people. particular. Bad luck to him. God forgive me for saying it. Swore he'd catch the trout. I swear I'll catch the trout. I swear I'll catch the trout. I swear I'll catch the little trout. You mark my word. for his dinner, the blackguard. My mouth is simply watering. Well, what would you think of the villainy of the soldier? Call me a villain, but that's quite unfair. Call me a villain, but that isn't quite fair. taste for a good fish supper. Well, come along, 
bring to my net. All I want is a good fish supper. Sure enough, he catch the trout. Got you, delicious, and away with us home. And away with him home. sooner had he got home, but he puts on the frying pan. The pan is sizzling now. Some onions and potatoes. Potatoes and onions. A knob of butter now. Some butter and a pinch of salt. A dash of salt and pepper. Into the frying pan. Into the frying pan with you. Now don't you struggle. And into it he pitches the party that you say. In you go, don't wriggle so, my lovely little trout. The trout squealed, all as well as a Christian creature. <laughs> And, my dear, you'd think the soldier would split his sides laughing, for he was a hardened villain. A hardened villain, me? Well... And when he thought one side was done, he turned it over to fry the other. This side must be done. I'll flip you over now. And what would you think? But the devil of a taste of a bird was on it at all, at all. The devil a taste of a burn, at all of a burn, at all. What gives? And so the soldier thought it was a queer trout that could not be brained. I want an odd trout that cannot be broiled, a strange trout. But I'll give it another turn by and by. He little thought what was in store for him, the haven. Why call me names? I'm simply hungry. Well, when he thought that sight was done, he turns it again. And lo and behold you, the devil had taste more done that sight was nor the other. Rotten luck to me, but dash it all to hell. I'll fry you again, delicious, as clever as you think yourself. And so, with that, he turns it over, but not sign of the fire was on the party trout.
For sure, sir, the soldier was a desperate villain entirely, or he might know he was doing a wrong thing, seeing that all his endeavors was no good. Well, 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 my jolly little trout, maybe you are fried enough, maybe you are fried enough, though you don't seem too well dressed, you don't, you don't, you don't seem too well dressed, but you may be better than you look, you may be better than you look. Like a singed cat and a tidbit after all. And with that, he ups with his knife and fork to taste a piece of the trout. But, my jewel, the minute he puts his knife into the fish, a murdering screech. <laughs> that you think the life would leave you if you heard it. jumps the trout out of the frying pan into the middle of the floor. <gasps> and on the spot where it fell, up riz a lovely lady. The beautifulest creature that eyes ever seen. Dressed in white and a band of gold in her hair. blood running down her arm. Look where you caught me, you villain. And she held out her arm to him, and my dear, he thought the sight it lave his eyes. trembled like a dog in a wet sack, and at last stammered out something, and begged for his life, and asked her ladyship's pardon, and said he didn't know she was on duty, or he was too good a soldier not to know better, nor to meddle with her. Thank you. 
turned me into a pinkeen, a pinkeen. saw the little trout on the ground. Well, he put it in a clean plate, and away he runs for the bare life, for fear her lover would come while she was away. And he'd run, and he'd run. Even till he came to the cave again and threw the trout into the river. The minute he did, the water was as red as blood for a little while, by raise of the cut, I suppose, until the stream washed the stain away again. And to this day, there's a little red mark on the white trout where it was cut. Well, sir, from that day, the soldier was an altered man reformed his ways, and went his duty regular, and fasted three times a week. In course of time, he left the army, and turned hermit, and they say he used to pray evermore for the soul of the white trout. <laughs> 